Hello everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at my iMac mid-2014. Now I originally bought this computer back in 2014, about a week after it was announced and came out. I purchased it because I wanted a newer iMac, at the time I only had a 2006 white polycarbonate iMac and wanted something a bit newer than the older iMac. And I wanted to use this machine for college. At the time it was on sale because it recently came out at Best Buy and I also had some pretty nice college coupons as well so I got this machine for a really decent price. Now it isn't one of the highest end iMacs out there in fact it's one of the lowest end iMacs of its design and its design is the newer one that they still have today where it's quite thin around the edges but you know thicker in the center. And the same overall uh, front end design as the earlier late 2009 to mid 2011 IMAX, but of course, as previously stated, it's the thinner bezel design around the outside here. So, enough about the design of this computer. What about what is inside of it? Well, inside it has a 1.4 GHz Intel Core i5 processor with turbo boost up to 2.7 GHz. Now this really helps with any task that needs the extra power. And it is only dual core, but it has four threads. So some programs see it as only a dual core computer and some programs see it as a quad core computer. But having the turbo boost and the extra threads does help it out quite a bit. It also has 8 gigs of RAM, which is soldered to the motherboard, so you can never replace it, which isn't one of the best ideas, but I guess that's what they went with. It has a 500 gigabyte spinning hard drive at 40, or sorry, 5400 RPM. It's a laptop style hard drive, so two and a half inch. It also has Intel HD 5000 graphics with one and a half gigabytes shared uh, video RAM on the 21 and a half inch 1080p display. So, some of those specs sound really familiar to something else, and they do. The actual inside of this machine is pretty much the same as the 2014 MacBook Air on pretty much all levels. So, it's pretty much a MacBook Air uh, logic board inside of an iMac. Of course, it's slightly modified to fit with inside of the enclosure, but it's pretty much the same thing, just a desktop form. So enough rambling about how the machine is, let's go ahead and take a look around. Looking from above, you can definitely see how thin the computer is at the edges, but how thick it is towards the center. Of course, it does have to house all the equipment in the inside, so that's why it's like that. But at the top, you will also find our dual microphones, and the reason for this is the one on the back actually cancels out ambient noise in the room so it can hear your voice better when you're using the built-in FaceTime HD camera. Taking a look at the back of the machine, in the center we will find the Apple logo, which is used to let Wi-Fi and Bluetooth through the aluminum enclosure. In the bottom right-hand corner we will find our power button, and in the opposite corner we will find our I.O. ports. For ports we have an audio out jack, but you can also use it for audio in, we have an SD card slot, four USB 3.0 ports, two Thunderbolt 1 ports, and Ethernet. Underneath the stand, we will find a ventilation hole, in addition to our power jack and a Kensington lock port. At the bottom of the machine, we will find our ventilation holes, in addition to our stereo speakers, which actually sound very good on this machine. Okay, so now that we've taken a look around the outside of the machine, let's go ahead and turn it on and see how well it performs. Surprisingly, this machine doesn't really boot up any faster than the late 2009 iMac that I have sitting next to it. It actually takes uh, about the same amount of time, sometimes it's quicker, but that would be because this does have a slow spinning hard drive in it. A laptop style drive only at 5400 RPMs versus the late 2009 iMac that has a 7200 RPM hard drive in it uh, which is 3.5 inch and this one in the uh, machine that we're looking at right now 
has a two and a half inch laptop style hard drive. It did have an option for um, an SSD, but I did not decide to do that because I didn't feel the need to have it for the application that I was using this computer with here at college. And I wasn't too concerned about getting a machine that was totally all specced out because I didn't really need the power of that either. And if I ever do, I'll just purchase another one. So, if I didn't state before, this machine is running 10.12.5 macOS Sierra. And it does a very good job of running it. I do not know at this point in time what the next version of macOS will be, but it probably will be supported on this machine. So we're waiting for it to still boot up. We're missing the time and Wi-Fi symbols up in the top right hand corner and there they just came. Looks like it still has to search for a Wi-Fi signal though. Oh, found it right away. That's nice. So like I said, this is my everyday computer for sitting at my desk here. I do use my MacBook Pro a little bit more than that. But whenever I'd like a bigger screen and uh, different applications that I don't have on my MacBook Pro, I definitely come to this computer. So let's go ahead and take a look at about this Mac. Now that we're almost completely booted up here, you can see we're not all the way there with the uh, spinning beach ball. Now one of the reasons that I like to record with the camera versus a screen capture program is because I don't want the screen capture program to be slowing down the computer. Now it might not do it at all, or it might slow it down a bunch. I have no idea, but I don't want to mess around with it. I want to give you, the viewer, the accurate experience of using this machine. So here are the specs of the computer. We'll go ahead and look at the display here. Storage. We are missing um, memory from these options up here and that's because as previously stated the memory is soldered to the motherboard and there's no way of upgrading it unless you desolder it and all this kind of fancy stuff. So it's pretty much stuck with 8 gigs of RAM which is a pretty decent amount for this machine in this day and age. Like I said, I'm not too worried if this computer becomes out of date and slow, I'll just purchase a higher end version. Like I said, I only wanted to use this for college, nothing too spectacular. However, this video that you are watching will be edited on this machine. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at Safari here. It is of course up to date. So we'll go ahead and look at one of the lighting sites here. Loads everything very nicely, it's very smooth. I am using the Apple Bluetooth keyboard that it originally came with in addition to the Magic Mouse. Now these two accessories do still use the uh, AA batteries, so there's no need for worrying about plugging it in while uh, you're trying to use your machine, which is nice. You'll also go to YouTube here so you can see how that loads. It does a very good job. I've never had any streaming problems with this machine. It seems to be able to handle all types of streaming services. I've never had any lag with it. But again, that also depends on the type of internet connection that you have. It typically seems to stream at about uh, 720p but like I said, it all depends on your internet again. So we'll scroll up and down here quick and you see it keeps up with it very nicely. Go ahead and quit. Of course, you can also use Firefox and Chrome if you like those applications. They're both up to date on this computer as well. We also have Office 2016. It takes a little while for it to start up, but that's because we're not on an SSD, we're on a spinning hard drive. If you don't really like Office 2016, you can also run Office 2011 and 2008 on this computer as well if you like those versions better. 
If we come up with a blank document here, we'll go ahead and open it. And for some reason it didn't open all the way. But uh, there is a giant document. Works perfectly fine once it's up and running. Did I hit quit or not? There we go. I guess I might have missed it. So you can see there is a whole bunch of different applications you can run on this machine. And all of them are up to date and work just fine. I tend to play Minecraft on this machine quite a lot. So I suppose we'll go ahead and take a little look at how well that works since I'm already logged in on this computer. So it took a little while to load up and I just cut that out. But we can go ahead and uh, load a random world here. Of course full screen is not a problem either. And uh, I don't know what settings it's on, but uh, it works. It works just fine. There's not a problem here. So if you like Minecraft, it definitely works on this computer just fine. I've also used Steam on this machine. Uh, I haven't used any uh, very demanding games but um, it seems to work just fine as well. So anyway, this computer is fully up to date and I use it for anything from writing a paper to editing a video such as this one that you're watching right now and I've never had any problems with it. In the end, I really do hope you enjoyed this look at my mid-2014 iMac. Also please comment, rate, and subscribe and thank you very much for watching.